They're down a mech, so they're also down one more. Goes for the shift up aggressively. Sparkle is not aware of that position. Notice how when he's going for this combo, he's getting as close as he can to Sparkle. Because if you can get close, you can land as many of those stickies as possible. And it's easier to land those stickies. Um, I think Sparkle might actually just die from the stickies alone. Yeah, he just dies from the stickies. Nano stickies, you're dead. He, he, see ya. You, you're absolutely dead. So he shifts up, he gets the kill on Sparkle. This is already a great start for a better. Now this is very aggressive play. He's going all in for this play, right? Because what cooldowns does he have to get away? He has no cooldowns. He has no shift. He has no clone. And somehow Fielder misses this. Gets the stickies. Fielder's also dead. Fate follows up. He shifts away to the high ground to safety because his nano's running out. And so he gets he essentially gets a 3k here. Huge impact there from Pleta. Just trying, he, he reads all of the information there and what's going on in the fight. Welcome everybody, my name is Coach Hayes and today we're going to be reviewing Fleta, MVP Season 3. As you can see, the man on the screen, he's going to be playing the Echo. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that make Fleta an incredible player and why he was the MVP of Season 3. As some of you guys know, the first thing we like to do when we get into a pro review is we like to break down the compositions. Um, this is the second game of the main melee finals between Shanghai Dragons and Fuel. Um, looking at the Dragons composition, we're going to see Fletter playing the Echo. Lip is going to be switching over to the Ash. We have the Winston Diva, and I believe we're going to have the Anna and the Mercy support line. On the side of Fuel, as of right now, they're currently on Tracer Sombra. Bull Diva, Anna, and Brig. Um, but that comp is likely to change based on what they are going to see here. So let's see if they are going to make some swaps. Um, I would say the strength of the composition from Dragons is, here is that they're going to have a lot of position control. They're going to be able to utilize these high grounds with their Ash, with the Anna. And they should have some really nice sight lines here for the Ash. Um, and Winston Diva is, is this Anubis first point is kind of like the playing ground for Winston Diva. They have a lot of room here to play, especially when they've got a nice Ana set up in the background that can support and enable them. So let's take a look at Fletter. This is a cool little angle, actually. I've never seen this before. Let's get some stickies down. Getting some information, just scouting, trying to see where where the enemies are coming from. One thing we're going to be paying a lot of attention to today is going to be the angles at, at which he's taking these these uh, scouts and pressures. This angle from here, you see if, if he starts to get shot by Fielder here, he can now dip behind the cover. May, some of you may have also seen my Echo Guide. This is something I talk about a lot in my Echo Guide. It's crucial when you're playing the Echo that you make sure you play behind the, the, the natural cover here. And so he gets some shots off on the Ana, and then he dips right behind that cover there for safety. One of the strengths of Echo is you have an incredible amount of spam damage. People I coach don't realize how much spam damage you have from a distance. And so you can play as far away as you want. You have zero fall off damage. You can spam away. So we see here Fletcher's using this using this corner to spam. Just take some damage. He dips behind the cover. And we're probably going to see him go aggressive here. Land some stickies. He just go very aggressive here. He commits his shift to go for those stickies. He does land a lot of the stickies. But one thing he doesn't take into account is the enemy echo. Now in this comp, the enemy threats are pretty much going to only be the enemy echo. And potentially getting hacked by the Sombra. Um... He should never really be in an open position where Fielder can pick him. So the main threat he has to be aware of here is going to be Sparkle. Um, and as we can see here, he shifts too aggressive. Doesn't take into account that Echo. And that threat, Echo manages to get the damage down, get some stickies. And bins there for the follow-up and Fletcher goes down. So not a great start there. Um, not a great start there for Fletcher. I think the biggest problem he had here is he didn't take into account this Echo. Um, Echo from close range... She has an incredible amount of burst damage. And if you're not aware of that Echo, one sticky combo, one try shot, and the beam, you're dead instantly. Luckily for Fletcher, his team managed to clean this up. Very, very close. 8 HP kill on Doha there. It's not the best start from Fletcher. Let's see how he can bounce back from this.
I know for a fact now this these players, you know, he's gonna he's gonna adapt now. He's not gonna get punished by Sparkle again after this, because he knows that was a big big mistake. Getting some spam spam damage down on the Winston while they're crossing, trying to farm any ult charge he can. Notice how he's not committing a shift yet. He's not investing shift. He's maintaining this position with his shift, and he's probably going to use his shift defensively if he needs to, or aggressively if he needs to. He's getting hacked by the Sombra, doesn't manage to react to that. But because of his positioning, he's totally safe, right? Echo, like I said at the beginning, Echo has an incredible incredible amount of spam from distance, and you have zero falloff damage, so... You're really not worried about just spamming away from a distance. Gets hand in low, goes for the beam. Notice how he's not... He's making sure that he's going for that beam when the target is below 50. Poor Fate. Fate gets absolutely shredded. Goes for the stickies there onto, uh, onto Fearless while he's sleeping. And that should be a kill. Yeah, we see the power of the beam there. Beam is one of the abilities that makes Echo such an incredible hero. And why she is kind of so strong. Because anyone on the enemy team, if they're below 50, they got to be afraid. One thing to note is that Sparkle is at a disadvantage in this Echo 1v1 because obviously Leta does have the pocket. Oh, that's really bad. Goes for the stickies, tries to sticky when the Matrix is down. And one thing that you, you're probably not going to, uh, you probably haven't noticed, but he's quite fluid with his shift usage, right? Let's look at the shift use. He shifts forward. He's shifting forward aggressively. And towards the, la the latter end of his shift, he's drifting back. Why is he drifting back? Well, he has no defensive ability. His shift is his defensive ability. And if he stays on top here, he has no way of getting back other than just glide back. So he's gliding back already because his shift is on cooldown. So playing well around his shift cooldown. This is something that's crucial um, on any hero you play in Overwatch. You have to understand what are your defensive abilities and you have to play around them. Right now, he's shifting forward aggressively, or he's towards the end of his shift, he's hovering down. I assume we're going to see him hover back because he doesn't have shift. One thing to note here, he's not playing quite as close. Um, mostly because last time, Sparkle kind of, you know, he put him in his place. And so this time, Letter's not making the same mistake. Does go for the clone just before the EMP hits. Um, I don't think Brig is the one you want to be cloning here, to be honest. I think a good clone for him here is going to be the Winston. I'm not sure if he meant to clone the Brig. Um, a great clone for him is going to be Winston or Sombra. But just peeling back, just playing defensive, he's going to try and show them off. Oof, that was so close. That was very close. Okay, so let's take a look at the tempo. Tempo is something that I've explained, explained briefly on the channel, but this is something that is very, very incredibly important for Overwatch. So tempo is essentially which team has the current advantage, which team is in the driving seat, so to speak. So if we look at, if we try and figure out who's in the driving seat here, let's take a look at what information we've seen so far. So we've already seen that fate is dead. So fate is dead, but also fearless is dead. So both teams, if we look here, I believe both teams have five players. One, two, three, four. Where's the diva? I cannot find Hanbin right now. Where is Hanbin? For some reason Hanbin is invisible. I, I have no idea why. But Hanbin is currently hacking. He's invisible. So who the hell knows why he's invisible, but he, but he is. So both teams have five. Um, Dragons have five. This is a very strange, very strange game. Uh, this has to be a bug, right? This has to be a bug. So... Shanghai have five, as we can see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And so did Dallas. So as of right now, both teams are even in terms of the player advantage. So player advantage, both teams are even. No tempo advantage there. Let's have a look at the position tempo. So position tempo essentially means which team is in control of the favorable, posi favorable positions on the map. Now, if we look at this, I would say Fuel have the position tempo. Why do they have the position tempo? Well, this platform here is a key position to this to this map. 
it's kind of like the key to unlocking this point because if you have a good good position on this on this platform it allows you to have consistent healing and line of sight onto the point here to enable your team to push in um and shanghai don't really have very very favorable position here lip is at the back Iziaki's at the back they're not in very strong positions to really find value there so that's the position tempo dallas have the position tempo let's look at the ultimate tempo ultimate tempo dragons are using bob dragons are using uh rally uh, sorry dragons are using clone on the brig and they're also using valk on the side of fuel fuel are using clone fuel are using rally i would say in this case you will actually have the tempo because of that rally. Rally is one of an incredibly strong ability for giving your team the tempo. It allows you to be aggressive and it allows you to kind of overwhelm the enemies. This Bob is doing a decent job, um, but I would say this rally is somewhat giving them a, a slight, slight tempo. They use Diva Bomb, so now they have even more tempo. They do get Void's Mech. So this is kind of a lot of information. And this the, the great thing about being a pro player is I was sorry. What I should say that the hardest thing about being pro, a pro player and is is trying to track all of this information in real time and make the correct decisions. This is what they're able to do. So they are now down one player because Lip has just died. Uh, Void is out of mech, but Void has been forced to use his ult. And there, the Nano has come out from Sparkle onto onto uh, onto Hanbin. So now they have a big, big tempo disadvantage, right? Dallas are taking all of the maps, all of the map control, all of the space. They're using nano. Um, they're pushing forward. And dragons are down one. So Leta has to play defensively here. He has to play defensively. Or they have to look for any way or any opportunity of trying to pull, uh, turn this tempo. Now I do see that dragons have a nano. So this is possibly an opportunity where they could go with a nano engage here. Um... And, and Fletter has to make a play. You know, he has to make a play. He's stalling as long as he can. But as we can see here, Fate is almost back. So right now, the tempo is somewhat evening out. Because Fletter is back. They managed to survive this initial push from Dallas. They're still one down. But Fate is on his way back. Let's see how he plays this now. They're down a mech. So they're also down one more. Goes for the shift up aggressively. Sparkle is not aware of that position. Notice how when he's going for this combo, he's getting as close as he can to Sparkle. Because if you can get close, you can land as many of those stickies as possible. And it's easier to land those stickies. Um, I think Sparkle might actually just die from the stickies alone. Yeah, he just dies from the stickies. Nano stickies, you're dead. See ya. You're absolutely dead. So he shifts up, he gets the kill on Sparkle. This is already a great start for Beta. Now this is very aggressive play. He's going all in for this play, right? Because what cooldowns does he have to get away? He has no cooldowns. He has no shift. He has no clone. And somehow Fielder misses this. Gets the stickies. Fielder is also dead. Fate follows up. He shifts away to the high ground to safety because his nano is running out. And so he gets he essentially gets a 3k here. Huge impact there from Fletter. Just trying, he, he reads all of the information there on what's going on in the fight. And he pieces the, this all together and he, tr he finds an opening. Let's see the Sombra there. Wow, okay. So, you know, you can see how difficult this is in real time. Amongst all of the pressure, including this being a finals. You have to give this guy some credit on how difficult this is. And to be honest, this is something most pro players can do. Um, but just to give you an idea of how incredibly hard this is so he does have clone he has another clone coming available here so this is much better right he goes for the he cancels he uses that uh, echo clone invincibility period to negate the EMP value goes for the the clone on the Winston and goes straight for this Lucio this is good target focus from him and uh, Void sees the shift from Fielder so if we look at this in terms of like a cooldown tempo 
Fielder doesn't have tempo right now. Fielder's in big trouble because he's used his shift. So now he's actually killable for Fletter. Fletter cuts him off. And he should get this kill. Yep, he gets the kill. And that should be GG, really. That should... I mean, not GG, but that's a very, very strong hold. <laughs> Oof. Okay, he still gets the kill. So just unfortunately, the last last moment makes a slight mistake there. Gets hit by the diva bomb. I, I don't see Dallas coming back from this. That should be it. They've got it. Okay. So full hold from, from Dragons there. 50% on the meter. 50.7%. This is what Dragons have to get. It's going to be a tough one for Fuel, but if Dragons can do it, Fuel can potentially do this as well. All right, here we go. Dragon's composition, we have Widow, Widow, Echo, Winston, Diva, Anna, Brig. And on the side of Fuel, we have Anna, Brig, Winston, Diva, Echo, and Tracer. Fuel really, really seem to be preferring this Anna, Brig. Um, Dragons are now deciding to go with the Anna, Brig. Um, on defense, they were running the Mercy. I like this position a lot from, from Fletter, because this position just allows him to put a lot of a lot of pressure here and you see what this position kind of controls it well firstly it allows lit to get into a strong position and it also it it does a great job of controlling the area around this high ground like you can control the platform he sees the winston there he wants to clear them out seems like it seems like dragon here the style they're playing here they're trying to just make some space for lip and lip will do his job i think phyllis might be dead Oh, absolutely huge sleep from Izayaki. He gets the sleep, and that's a simple finish for, for Fletter. And that might already be GG. Two down. It's not often you see Overwatch League teams get two picks and lose the fight. This Doha doesn't have a clue. He goes in aggressively, and he's going down. Doha makes a hero play. Tries to get, tries to find a pick, and that's got to be GG. That's got to be it. And let's just take a look at this shift usage for the last fight and see how he used it. So he takes around the left side here. One other thing I want to note about this left side is it allows him a really, really strong position where he can put constant pressure and spam onto this whole sight line of Dallas. Right? Fate is play uh, Fearless is playing underneath. Hanbin is playing in the open. Doha is playing on this side. He can spam everyone from this position. So really nice initiative from Fletter to take this position because it just allows him to put so much more pressure on the map. And, and honestly, from here, he has the option of also being able to go behind and pressure from here and utilize the Mega if he needs to. The thing I see so many Echo players not find value from is just putting constant poke pressure with that zero damage fall off. So obviously he gets the kill onto, onto Phyllis there. shifts aggressively he knows that he knows that doha has committed to shift here and they already have the advantage so yeah this is a cleanup nice bash and that should be gg has to be gg goes for the beam as a finisher just a stall here from fuel i really don't see them coming back from this and there we go, GG. Um, we can clearly see why this guy was MVP of season three. Um, I hope this video kind of showcased you some of the examples of how to use your positioning, how to use natural cover, how to also try and for yourself recognize the tempo and try and use that tempo inf information to kind of in inform your play. Obviously, if your team doesn't have the tempo, you want to be playing more defensively. If your team has the tempo, that means you want to be pushing the advantage that you have, trying to go forward more and take more of of the map and also try and pressure the enemies more um 
I hope you guys found, found value from this video. And if you did appreciate this video and you enjoyed it, drop a like on the video and maybe even consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.